So I am checking this guitar body out, making sure everything looks right before um, I clear coat it because this one doesn't get much of a finish to it other than clear for the most part. This is a spalted maple, an Orion. Um, you can order an Orion with almost any kind of wood that you want for the top. Um, there's just enough charge, right? So, I mean, it's like I don't mind changing things a little bit. Uh, when you order a guitar, just tell me what you want. And then, you know, I charge appropriately to the changes, right? You don't have to do it exactly like, you know, the menu suggests, like it said. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about uh, Chinese guitars. You know, is it, is it a good idea to buy one of these? Okay, so let's talk about Chinese guitars a little bit. But before we talk about Chinese guitars, I have to talk a little bit about um, my mother. And my mother, um, you know, growing up, we did, we were broke. Like, we didn't have any fucking money. So when something around the house needed to be repaired or something like that, it was, instead of her saving the money um, to get the job done right, um, she would always try to just Mickey Mouse it and try to have it rigged um, in order to save money to get something to work. But usually what would end up happening is that she'd either buy an inferior product to replace what was, what was there, or she would um, have somebody that didn't really know what they were doing uh, re repair it, and uh, it would mean that you would have to replace it again, and then there would be more repairs. And at the end of it, you know, you think, well, I'm going to be saving $50 or $100. But by the time everything is done, and as many times as you had to replace it and had to fix it again, everything like that, you end up spending three or $400. And um, you ask yourself, was it really worth, was it worth it? No, it, it wasn't. So, so, you know, a lot of times it's better just to spend the money and get it done right the first time. Um, but sometimes we don't have the money right to get the things that we actually want so we have to get something that's similar I get that right like I said I mean I grew up poor as fuck so I, I get that you know I, I I don't even remember having an actual pair of Levi's I usually had like rustlers you know didn't you know I think I had like one or two pairs of Nikes growing up but most of the time it was like tracks you know came on shit because that's what we could afford so you'd get the copies but the copies of the shoes and the copies of the jeans and stuff like that, they would always fall apart, you, you know. Um, just like the Payless shoes, you know, like a lot of people would go and they'd get something that was similar at Payless shoes, all right. They'd fall apart. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that type of stuff up is because it, car it carries over into the guitar world as well. You know, you might sit there and say, oh, I want to get a Floyd Rose, but I don't want to spend $200 like on an actual Floyd. You know, so I'm going to buy this one that looks just like it, but I get it for $30. And there's usually problems with it because it's a, it's not hardened steel. You, you know, it might be just made out of like brass or something that, you know, just bends and <laughs> everything and just gets eaten up real easy. <coughs> so you have to be, you have to really know what you're buying, what you can use. Uh, that is, you have to you have to know what kind of quality, you know, something has to be in order for it to be effective and, and for it to be what you need it to do. Um, when you order a Chinese guitar, okay, it's important to know, and I've said this before, that just because something is made in China or in Indonesia or Korea or Taiwan doesn't necessarily mean that it's a hunk of shit. It doesn't mean that it was built badly, right? Um, but, but, and then this is the big but, there's also a lot of them that are built badly. And um, you need to know, like, you need to know. And really the only way to know for sure is rolling dice and gambling, right? You, you, you're going to be gambling. You don't know if it's going to be any good or not. Because you can't pick the guitar up and look at it closely. And, you know, uh, Paul Reed Smith years ago said uh, that people shop with their eyes, you know. And it's true, they do. If something's pretty, somebody's going to want to fucking buy it, right? You can have a picture of a guitar. It's absolutely gorgeous. People will buy it just because they like the way it looks. They don't even know if it's going to play well. They're hoping it will. 
um, but they put value on the guitar simply by the way it looks. So a lot of these Chinese uh, manufacturers, what they do is they focus on the appearance more than anything because they know that that's what's going to get buyers. And if you look real close at a lot of these guitars, um, a lot of times they'll use substandard wood. And, you know, they'll have areas where the grain is weak. It's like a guaranteed break. It's going to break there, right? But they don't care because it's, it's mahogany. As long as it holds its shape long enough for us to make the sale, we're good. You know, you'll see stuff like that. You'll, you, you know, sometimes they have bad electronics in them. You know, sometimes they end up having, like, shitty tuners, you know. Uh, it, it's, you, you know, if you're buying, it, okay, look, here in the United States, if you're going to build your own Les Paul, if you're going to build your own, you're going to spend at least $400, right, building your own, if you're going to do it from scratch. You're going to spend at least $400, okay? That's if you build it yourself, okay? And that's like probably the minimum, 400 right? If you end up, you know, wanting to go, like, full on, you know, make it exactly like a, a Les Paul Gibson, whatever, you know, you're going to spend more than that. So you have to ask yourself, how is it possible for an individual that builds their own here in the United States, costing them a minimum of $400, um, but there in China they can give you something that looks identical, for the most part, to a Les Paul. And they're only charging like $150, $180, right? And, uh, you know, how in the fuck is that even possible, right? Well, labor, right? There's a difference in labor and stuff like that. But also, um, the materials, right, are generally kind of substandard. They also get the materials cheaper and stuff like that. Um, but you kind of get what you pay for in a way, right? You're going to have to upgrade some stuff. If you buy one of those guitars, you're going to have to upgrade it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to get a good one. You, you can order Chinese built copy or whatever, and you might get a good one. Um, but you're rolling fucking dice, you know. And if you don't have the money to buy the actual Les Paul that you want, um, like, you know, telling the story about my mother, you have to ask yourself, are you going to put what little money you do have into something that is a gamble that you might end up spending more in the long run? Or you might have a guitar you can never even play, and there's like no resale value to it really. Um, it, you know, it, there's a lot of questions that get brought up. You know, that you have to ask yourself: Is it really worth the price? And you say it's a beautiful guitar. I know it's it's gorgeous, right? It's gorgeous. But um, if you can't play it, then who gives a shit how it looks, or, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, the frets are bad. Like they use shitty fretting material that. They don't bother doing any crowning or leveling. Sometimes the necks are twisted and warped, or sometimes the truss rod doesn't work. And you know, there's, but it doesn't matter because it looks nice. You know, and this is the type of stuff you have to think about. It, you know, are you willing to gamble? There's also the ethical aspects of it, the moral aspects, the legality of ordering something that you know is counterfeit. You know, I, personally, I avoid that shit. You know, I don't. I don't see the need for me to, I'm not, you're not saving that much money. You, you know, I mean, and, and everything that, everything that's a, like, all the negative things that are attached to it, is it really worth that few extra hundred dollars? I don't think so. It's better just to save your money and find a real one on eBay that's cheap or something, or on Craigslist or something that's cheap, and then just save your money and, and, and buy a used one or something. But. Um, <clears throat> You know, if you if you are thinking about buying one of those Chinese guitars, uh, and, and when I say Chinese guitars, I am really talking about the clones, because there's plenty of factories that are building guitars in China, and they're fine. There's nothing really wrong with the guitar. You'll have to do a setup, but it's it, that's almost a given almost on any guitar that you buy. It doesn't make a difference where it's from. You know, there's been plenty of guitars that I've had people bring me brand fucking new, brand new, and I and I had a you know fuck around with the frets and level and crown them and fucking do all sorts of shit. Uh, you know, do a good setup and alter things. And these are all brand new, just out of the factory, and they're big names. 
You know, I've had to do that on uh, Gibsons. I've had to do it on Fenders. I've had to do it on Ibanez. I've had to do it on Jacksons. I've, you know, you name it. I've had to do it to all of them. Uh, you know, so just even, even though you, you buy a guitar that's expensive and it's here in the United States, doesn't mean that it's going to be fucking perfect right out of the box either. Generally, that type of stuff, you have to go through like an independent luthier or something because, you know, the business is not as large and they can spend more time on the quality aspect of it, like the quality control. Um, they can do more testing, make sure everything's right. Like for instance, every guitar that I build, before I send it out, I play it for two hours. You know, I sit there and I set it up, I try to get the action as low as I can possibly get it, set all the pickups up, and then I go inside and I just play it for two hours. And I try to simulate um, playing like live on stage in a concert, right? I, I try to do that because I want this thing to be able to really perform um, for both the person that is the, you know, couch guitarist, but also the person that's going to be taking it out on the road and stuff. And a lot of times companies don't do that. Like what they'll do is they'll just put it on a little practice amp, make sure that there's no dead spots or something like that, or there's no there's no fretting out. Um, pickups are the right height, and they just call it good like that, you know. And a lot of times if a fret is out a little bit, instead of them repairing the fret, what they'll do is they'll just raise the action a little bit. And you'll see that a lot of new guitars will have the nut. The nut, it's like the slots are so fucking high on them. They do this so that way um, you don't have, they don't have to be as accurate with the frets, right? They don't have to be as accurate with the setup and all this other stuff. Um, but with the nut slots being really, really high, it pretty much guarantees that your intonation is never going to be right. You know, you're, you're not, the, the nut slots are so important and they get overlooked all the time. They get overlooked all the time. But, um, you know, you can usually tell you know, because when you're you're playing open chords or you're playing near the lower register, even every even though everything's in tune, when you go up to the twelfth fret and it looks like it's intonated, you're playing down there and you're out of tune. It's because of the, the nut slot height. You know, and this is one of the reasons why they, they started building that thing called like Irvana and all these other fancy nuts. It's not necessary. Those things are not necessary. If you if you cut the nut slots correctly. All that shit's not necessary. It's, it's. I, I'm not into it. You, you know, to me, I think it's a gimmick. It's, it's not necessary. But um, that's kind of going off into a, a different thing. So ultimately, Chinese guitars. You know, should you do it? Should you not? It's up to you. You, you know, if you like it, and that's what you can afford, and that's what you want, and you don't mind having to dick with the thing, trying to get it to sound right go right ahead, you, you know. Just remember there are some moral and ethical questions that arise from purchasing counterfeit guitars and, or copies and stuff like that. Um, but um, generally, I would avoid it, right? I think it's just too much of a headache. You know, you might get a good one. You know, I just, it's, it's just too much of a headache. You know? Well, anyway, guys, um, I got to get back to work here. Um, but I figured I would just kind of do a video and talk about that a little bit um, just because it gets brought up so much But anyway guys until next time I will talk to you later